Hey there, and how are you doing? In this video, we are going to be going through the installation process of MySQL Community Server on a Windows PC. We are also going to be installing the MySQL Workbench, which is the interface for working with a MySQL database. So the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up any browser of your choice and just search for download MySQL Community Server and if you search for that you should get a link to download that so this is the link this is the one we are looking for download mysql community server go ahead and click on that and once we do that it will bring us to this page so we want to go to the download page so we click on this to go to the download page you have to be very careful um, while doing this because there are so many download options here we want this exactly this one here that says go to the download page so we go ahead and click on that and once you click on that it should give you two files okay the one we want is the this one here of 437 437.3 megabytes okay then we go ahead and click on the download button here that should go ahead and start the download and if you don't have an account it will prompt you to create one but we don't want to create one so we'll click on this option that says no thanks just start my download once you click on that, the download should start. Um, I already have this downloaded before I started this recording. So I'm just gonna, uh, go, going to go ahead and stop this. But you can let yours download and then we can start the installation. With the file downloaded now, let's go ahead and double click on that to start the installation. Sometimes it might take time to start up, just give it time. Alright, once you get this Windows pop-up, just go ahead and click on yes. My pop-up one more time again, just make sure you click on yes. Alright, yes. Alright. Um, I want to click on no, yeah. Good. Now, to start up the installation, there are actually a couple of options we can pick from. Some of the options will go ahead and install some default apps for you. Why some of the options will allow you to select which apps you want to install. Now, we downloaded the MySQL Community Server, but what we actually need inside of it, because that file we downloaded is like a package of different products from MySQL. What we actually need from it is MySQL Server itself and MySQL Workbench. The workbench is that interface where we'll be writing our queries. So, in order to, to get those two um, products alone, instead of on installing other products we don't need, we are going to be using this custom option. And then once we select that, we'll click on next. And as you can see, we have two boxes here. One on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. Now, on the left hand side, you can see it tells you these are the available products. And on the right hand side, what we are seeing here is products to be installed. Currently, we have not selected any products to install. That's why this is empty. All right, so let's go ahead and select MySQL server by just clicking on this icon here. Click on this again, this, and we should get this. This is what we want. Now, the moment I select that, you can notice there is a green button pointing to the other boss. And immediately I click on that, you can see you move this here. We also need MySQL Workbench, and that one is available in under Applications. So you want to click on the drop down again until you will get to MySQL Workbench. Click on the arrow to move it to this side. Now that we are done with this, we want to click on Next. The moment we click on Next, it will take us to the page to install these two products we selected. So click on Next, and you can see this here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Execute. Now, I recommend you still leave your internet connection on because sometimes you might still need to download some um, files to help with the installation. Alright, once that is done, we'll go ahead and click on next. And the next thing we want to do is configure our server. Basically, the only thing we are going to be doing here is setting up a password that we'll be using to log into the server. So we'll click on next. Don't change anything here, just go ahead and click on next again. Next, and now we have to enter our password. Now, if you're going to be using this for practice, probably you're just learning database and um, um, SQL. 
I advise you use a very simple password because um, I can't stress this enough. Okay, the password you enter here, it is very important to remember it later. Because if you don't remember it, it is very difficult to change it. So what we want to go ahead and do is, I'll just enter 1234 for my own. You can go ahead and enter any password you like, as long as you can remember it later. Alright, so 1234, it will complain the password is weak, but I don't care. This is just my own personal PC. If you were doing this on, the, on an office PC, probably the organization will have a stronger password they want they want to use and of course they will always remember that but for this use a very simple password click on next and then next execute to finish up the configuration okay now that this is done you want to go ahead and click on finish and then next and as you can see this option to start mysql workbench is currently checked which means once we click on finish, it will start up my SQL workbench. Alright, my SQL workbench is up. Let's try to log into the server and see if everything is good. So to connect, we'll click on this local instance we have here. We will click on that and you can see it's asking us for the password which is 1234 like I entered in my case you can enter your own password there and then I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and click on this option to save password in vote this I'm doing this because the next time I open my SQL workbench I don't want to enter my password again if you don't do that you have to enter the password every time you start up my SQL workbench so I'll click on OK and boom we're good to go Let's just write a query to create a database to be sure that everything is good. So we we'll would say create database. Let's call this super mat. All right, and execute this. It says it's successful. Let's refresh, and you can see we have our database there. All right, so there you have it. That is how you install MySQL Community Server and MySQL Workbench on the Windows PC.